Well, against my better judgment, I'm making this video anyway. I've questioned for a long time whether or not homosexuality, in which I consider myself a gay man, might have a root cause. There might be some sort of biological element to it. There could be some sort of gene that makes it possible. But I think the way that someone is raised has a huge degree to how that comes out. For a long time, I've wondered whether or not it's caused by, when it comes to gay men, caused by having a lack of a father or having an abusive father and an overbearing mother. That certainly would match my scenario. When I've talked to most other gay men, that seems to be their scenario as well. This is not to say that it's everyone. But... I looked up non-religious gay conversion therapy just, just to see. I'd been scared to look it up. Kind of like when... You have a, a symptom of, you know, some sort of physical symptom and you don't want to look it up because you know that if you look it up, you know, everything leads to cancer. You know how that is, right? Well, I was scared to look this up because I thought it would be a similar sort of thing. So I'd never looked it up. And there's this phrase, I probably don't have it exactly, but... Uh, the person who founded NARTH had made a statement such as, we tell fathers, if you don't hug your son, some other man will. And I thought that was interesting. There are a number of people who groan at that, saying, oh, that's just, that's self-hatred. And it's just like, no, it's not that I hate myself. It's just that I feel unfulfilled. I have a desire to have someone in my life that can just still somehow help show me what it is to be a man. What does it mean? You know, a, a father figure of sorts, but I'm 46 now. And that doesn't make sense anymore. The older I get, the less I understand my sexuality. Previous to my deciding to lose weight, I had sort of changed my sexuality into self-sexuality. It was all about being what it is that turns me on. Myself being what it is that turns me on. That was what I had focused on. And it worked for me. Until it didn't. Until I realized, holy shit, this was such a stupid thing for me to do. You know, now I'm, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm physically healthy, knock on wood. And I'll probably live quite a bit longer than I would have if I would have kept up the what, what I was doing before. But I'm left more confused than ever. And I still have this desire to have a male figure in my life. A male companion, if nothing else. I've never been comfortable with gay sex. 
The only thing that I've really gotten from it is this element of, hey, I can please someone whom I consider masculine. There was a point in my 20s, probably my mid-20s, where, well, early to mid-20s, I should say, where I was kind of able to enjoy gay sex. But when I became older and was no longer essentially well, like, some words that people sometimes use, there's a chicken hawk and there's a chicken. And when I was no longer the, the young chicken that people would have, people would want to be with because I seemed really young and it seemed like a father-son sort of thing, as soon as that started to leave, as soon as I lost that element, and I started becoming more of what I would hope being a man is, I stopped enjoying gay sex. I, I'm, I'm honestly, I, I've, I, just to be blunt, I, I've been grossed out by it. I probably shouldn't admit that. But I probably shouldn't admit anything that I'm saying in this video. I still have an attraction, to some degree, to heavy guys. But... Some of that is very fetishy, still. And I have kind of guilt about, if I got with someone who's heavy, particularly if they don't like being heavy, that if I wasn't trying to help them be more healthy, that I'm doing a terrible disservice to them. I'd feel manipulative. But if I find someone who does like being heavy, they're not very likely to want to be with a guy who doesn't want, who isn't heavy and doesn't want to be heavy. But even with that, I, I guess I just don't. I don't understand. And because of the way that the Psychiatric Association has labeled things now, and has labeled them for years now, I don't really have any options to talk about this stuff. I suppose I could talk with a, you know, the, the thing that scares me is if I talk to someone who would want to do something about this or would have some answers, they'd be religious answers. Which is why I'm sort of terrified of starting to talk with a therapist if they were religious. I mean... They now label gender dysphoria as not a mental thing. It's not a. It's not a. a it's not a mental disorder. So it it keeps opening up to more of this. I don't know how to describe it. It's 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 changed in such a way that. Older standards aren't allowed. Looking at gender an older way 
looking at sexuality in an older way, isn't allowed. It isn't something that would be offered. Again, not unless there was religion mixed into it. And then religion would be the, the main defining factor of, of the therapy that would be given. And I don't want that. I think that I could... I, 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 I still have hopes that I can maybe feel fulfilled... in a relationship with a guy, but it wouldn't be really sexual. It would be somewhat, somewhat platonic. I mean, we could be naked. We could probably jack off or something. We could maybe cuddle. But it wouldn't be this typical gay relationship. It wouldn't be the, the typical, and, and I, I don't know if I'd be able to find someone like that. Some of the thing it also makes me think about quite a bit is When one comes out as gay, it's almost also like coming out as having an ideology. I mean, straight people generally don't define themselves, they don't continually think about the fact that they're straight. They don't define themselves as straight most of the time. They just define themselves by the things that they do and how they think, what their values are, but their sexuality isn't, isn't the way that they define themselves. When someone comes out as gay, it, it's like you're defining yourself as your sexuality. Now, the whole reason why I'm talking about this is because when I looked up NARTH, it confirmed everything that, that I've been thinking for quite a while. They were saying some of the very things I'm saying right now. About, you know, people not defining themselves as, as a sexuality. It wasn't just North, though. I, I was looking up... Uh, um, hell, I think I even looked up a focus on the family, which is definitely a religious uh, thing, for sure. Um, and it's been considered very anti-gay. But there was something near the end of their explanation of, of how they feel about gay people is, you know, one shouldn't define themselves by their sexuality. And I kind of agree with that. Shouldn't and, and and you know, I've I've had gay friends that have been frustrated with you know how people define themselves. You know, I, I, I had a best best friend uh in uh from the from yeah, nineteen ninety to through throughout the nineties. He's still a good friend. But we had had talks when I was in my early 20s and late teens about, yeah, we, why define yourself as your sexuality? I'm more than my sexuality. But the way things are going anymore, it's all about I, defining oneself via this in some ways, arbitrary identity. It, it's kind of disturbing. Another disturbing thing that's in common in the gay male community is this 
shaming of anyone who doesn't want to have sex with someone who's HIV positive. Oh, how dare you, you look down on someone who's HIV positive. How dare you? That's weird. That's weird to me. There's so much ideological stuff in the LGBT community. There's so much of it. And you're supposed to march lock and step with it. I have a lot of gay friends. But I don't I don't talk about this stuff with them, really. Because if I do, they may drop me as friends. But I don't know who to talk to about it. Again, I don't know. If, if I see a therapist, they're going to go by the, the newer rules. I mean, I've got mental issues already. I, I already have some mental disorders. I've got issues. What difference does it make if some of my, my sexuality could be considered part of that? What, why does that, I mean, why would, does that, would that be such a bad thing? It's not saying that I'm broken. Well, I guess you could say, I, I don't know, maybe someone could say that means you're broken. I, I don't know. <sighs> then there's the concept of normal. You know, what is normal? What does that even really mean? What's the most common? Do I want to be normal? Do I want to be common? Part of my not being normal is part of why I'm, I'm good at, at being creative. Why I'm good at music. Would I want to be normal? I just think at 46, though, it's weird. It, it doesn't make any sense anymore to want a father figure. It doesn't, it's, it's, that's, it's, it's gone. It, I have to replace that with something else. I just didn't think I would still be so confused at 46. You know, I thought as I got, I mean, maybe eventually I'll be not so confused, but I, I, I always thought, you know, when you get older, you'll, you'll understand things more. But the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. I guess I don't know what more to say. Thanks for listening if you've actually watched this whole thing.